it's Will from EDM Tips. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make music like bicep. So I've had so many requests from you guys for this to make music in the style of bicep. So that is what this tutorial today is about. I'm going to be using the stock plugins in Ableton Live 10, but you can follow along in any door because the fundamental techniques still apply. But why would you want to make music like someone else? Well, you wouldn't want to copy them. Obviously, they've got their own style, but you can pick up tips and tricks that you can apply to your own music and then develop your own signature style. So it is worth trying to replicate music you love because you're going to learn so much so quickly like that. You can download the free project file and samples and all the presets that I use today uh, for free below. And what we will be covering will be the kick, the bass, the break beat, chord progressions, vocals, sound design, mixing, like a touch of arrangement, a little bit of arrangement. So there's lots to get through. I hope you enjoy it. If you like this video, give it a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends if you like it. And without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is pick apart what the vibe of Biceps music is. Like what kind of vibe does Biceps music have? So they've got this kind of old school breakbeat, ravey type vibe, which I really, really like. And it's got pretty much a very few elements, but they're just chosen really well. They're put together really well. So let's do it. First, the tempo. If we're going for that breakbeat kind of uh, tempo, we'll go for one, two, nine BPM. And then I've got my magic list here as well. All in one take, no editing and all of that stuff. So yeah, first thing we're gonna do is find a nice breakbeat to base this on. So I'm just gonna create an audio track. This is set up as my default template, by the way. So a couple of MIDI channels, a few MIDI channels and then this one as well, which I'll explain soon. Anyway, let's find a breakbeat. Now I'm gonna use Splice for this because it's just a great way to kind of find samples. And I did a bit of research earlier, so I've got some recently added ones, but if you just write in something like mm, breakbeat or rave, uh, something like that, then you know it's gonna come up and then let's have a preview. Like that's all wrong. Okay, so if you do something like this instead, rave, and then search for, let's say, drums, and then break. I'm sure I saw one that said breaks. Ah, uh, oh yeah, there we go. Breakbeat genres, breakbeat. So let's have a listen. So that kind of thing. You know, that old school breakbeat sound. But obviously if you choose loops instead of single shots, then you're gonna come up with some stuff that's gonna be better. Nothing with vocals though. There we go, something like that is great. Um, so I found one earlier anyway, this one. So I'm just gonna drag that from Splice there and you can then just loop it. So let's have a quick listen to this. And Ableton has automatically kind of got the tempo correct. Just analyzed it. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop the first part of that track and then just, so that change in the tempo, sorry, that change in the beat happens at the end of the fourth part. like that. So I'm just going to duplicate that. And da -da 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 -da, I'm going to color that green, call it breakbeat. And this is what we are going to be basing the track around primarily, break of beat. Oh yeah, by the way, the track is called Tricep. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> right, okay. Let's just consolidate that, grabbing it all. Press Command and J, and then we can just easily loop it. Let's call it Breakbeat. Color it green. And then there we go. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna quantize this because there's a bit of groove to it, a bit of swing to it, but I want this beat to be pretty much on the grid. So if we zoom in close here, we can see that this beat isn't actually on the grid. So to tighten that up, I'm just gonna press Command and A, to select it all, you might not even have to do that. Then I'm gonna open up the quantize settings. 
make sure it's set to 100%, press OK, and you'll see it's created these warp markers and it's shifted everything. So now it's bang on the grid. Cool, okay, on to the next thing. We are going to make that beefier because we want that like a really nice full sounding breakbeat. And we're gonna do that by augmenting it with some other drums. So the first thing I'm gonna do is augment it with a kick. Um, so let's just find a nice kick sound. And that's just to give it more weight. Um, so then we can program in the kick where the kicks are hitting in the loop. So let's do that. Um, am I hearing that? Yeah. And I'm just going to copy that and then remember at the end of the break beat in the fourth, um, the fourth bar, we've got the change up of rhythm. And next we are going to find a snare just to make that the snare hits even snappier. Um, so let's just go to uh, snares and have a listen. It's got to be short and snappy. Like a real sounding snare so it sounds like it's actually being played on a drum kit. That'll do. Then I'm going to play that from a sampler. In Ableton, this is the drum rack, and you'll see I've got these auxiliary channels linked up to my main auxiliary channels for my reverbs, um, and that's so I can add some to the snare on its own rather than the whole drum kit. And the way you do that is click this routing button here, then you can right click create return chain, I did that twice, then you can go in here and select your rack output and just choose you know, choose your main reverbs here and now you can add reverb to your separate drums you can press that close it up so you've got these send controls now so anyway let's actually just show you what i did there i'm gonna if we listen if we turn the break beat off you'll hear what i'm doing so i'm following the main beats the kick and the snare and programming it in and that's just to be able to have more control and give them more power if needs be. I'm going to do a little skip there as well. Cool. And remember the rhythm changes in the last part of this. So we'll have to change the snare. Duplicate that. Cool, there we go. Perfect. Right, on to the next thing, Bosch. Um, the vocals, this is the main, one of the main sounds um, for bicep. They've got these ethereal, ravey type vocals. So I'm gonna add those next and we will be going back to this stuff soon to do the mixing. Um, so we will be making it sound better as well. But what I'm going to do now is choose vocals, and this is going to help determine what key that we're going to write this track in. And again, I'm going to use Splice. No, I'm not affiliated with Splice, although they have just told me that my masterclass students can get a month's free of Splice, which is quite cool. Um, so that is something that's just come through for me. Right. So I wanted something like Indian, like Eastern sounding kind of ethnic female vocal. So it's quite ethereal. So what I did was I just searched in splice sounds. Um, I think I like you see, I found this one. And what I did was write in Indian. Um, and then I wrote in, I chose vocals. Yeah, Indian vocals. Um, female and then it came up with these and I just selected one it was quite simple so I chose this one because it's, it's quite rich and nice I like this so um, I'm going to drag that in and we can see it's in the key of B flat um, 
it's in the key of B flat. It tells us that here. Now, when we write the chords to this, having it in the key of B flat can make it a bit tricky because there are lots of black notes and you have to know your scales quite well. If we drop it down one semitone to the key of A minor or A major, um, although this could be major or minor because it's not got any thirds in the vocals, um, then it's going to be much easier because we're only going to be using the white note. So we're not going to get, you don't have to be a piano maestro um, to create something in the key of A minor. So let's have a quick listen to this. What I'm going to do is double click. I'm going to choose Complex Pro because it sounds nicest with vocals. Then I'm going to drop it by one semitone with the transpose button. And now, and now it's in A, which is going to make our job for writing the chords and the bass line much, much easier. But I want to make this a bit longer and epic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it there. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag it and it's going to stretch that second bit. It sounds a little unnatural, but it doesn't matter because it's the effect that we're really going for, the main thing. Now I'm going to show you how to do some cool gated triggering stuttering thing like they did in their track Glue. I think it was called Glue a couple of years ago. So um, this is cool. Fact. Right, we're going to choose a gate from Ableton's thing is, technical term for effect. Open up this little tab here and we can see we've got the sidechain option. And now what we can do is we can play in a rhythm that's going to make the vocal kind of cut like it's being transformed scratched. Okay, so we can hear the gates already working there. So I'll just create a MIDI track. I'm going to call this Trigger. And then I'm going to just load in any simple instrument. So operator is going to be the most simple. And I'm going to tap out a rhythm that I want the vocal to be kind of chopped up in or two. Oh, this latency. Um, I'm going to program it in. Whoops, I'll make this bigger so we can see what's going on. Almost there. So it's kind of like a Morse code sound, but we're not actually going to be hearing the sound itself. It's just going to be used as a trigger for the vocals. Perfect. Now let's check out what happens. First, I'm going to duplicate it. Command and D, consolidate it. Then I'm going to press this routing thing and make sure that it sends only so we won't actually hear it. But it is playing. And now we can feed that through the sidechain gate on the vocal track, like so, trigger, and check this out. So this is without the gate. Whoops, let's just fade that in a bit. And now with the gate, and you can choose to play with the hold and release. So you can hear the effect I'm going for there. Now let's add some nice hall reverb on there on the auxiliary channel. Make sure we've cut out the low end in the auxiliary channel. And I'm going to do a bit of tweaking on the vocal EQ quickly, uh, just with the EQ8. And this is to take out some of the low end and boost some of the high end. Uh, there might be some... Let's see... Uh, 
Just to make it a bit more breathy, I've gone really extreme on this EQ. I wouldn't usually do it this extreme. So that's without the EQ. So I want this really breathy. So this is what we've got so far. We've got some clipping here, so I'm just going to turn the volume down of everything. This trigger we can kind of minimize because we don't need it anymore. Cool. Okay, next thing to do, as I said, our vocals are now in the key of A. Um, it could be A minor or A major, but um, I'm going to choose A minor. And I'm just going to jam out some chords in A minor. As I said, on the keyboard, A minor starts on A, and then it's just all the white notes up to the next A. So it, you're far less likely to hit any wrong notes quick sip time. Let me know if you're enjoying this so far. Give me a hell yeah in the comments below or an amen brother, whichever you choose. Right, let's continue. So as I was saying, let's get these chords jammed out. Jam the F out. Instruments, no, sounds. I've just re installed Ableton on my new computer, so I haven't set up all the collections and stuff yet. Um, or indeed, I haven't installed any plugins. I've installed one plugin so far, and that's why I'm doing it all in Ableton plugins. So I'm just going to use one of the sounds that comes with uh, an Ableton pack. Here we go. So we've got a bit of a grand piano going on. So they are all the notes within the key of A minor. So let's just play some chords over this track. Really simple. So next is to, we will be using these chords very soon. I'm just going to show them, show you what they are in the piano roll editor. And again, you can use my template technique if you want to do this. So you can draw in all the white notes starting on A. And then when you press fold, bosh, these are only the notes within the key of A minor natural. So you're not going to hit any wrong notes. And then you can use that as a template. Just grab them all, press left so it's before the clip so you can't hear it. And then you can just use, you can just draw notes in here and you'll never hit a wrong note. But anyway, I'm just going to draw these in for you. So this was the first note. And the way that you can actually draw chords in or build them on that is by checking out the other video that I've got there or there. And also I'll just show you quickly a quick way of doing it. So now I've got two octaves here of the key of A minor natural. I press fold and all I need to do is skip one note each time. Skip a note, skip a note. Bosh, there's, there's your chord. Again, you can continue this. And what I'm going to do for the bass line is just copy the first note uh, or the root note of each of those chords and I'm going to copy them into a bass sound. Um, let's minimize trigger. And for the bass sound I'm going to use some really simple sine wave to give it lots of low end power and I'm going to do that using a, an operator which is like Ableton's most basic synth. So I'm just going to create a MIDI clip and then paste those notes in. But you can hear it's up high, so I'm just going to go in there, hold shift, press down twice. Going to grab them all and extend them slightly. So 
there's the basics or and the basis of our track. So on to the next thing. What's on my magic list today? Um, ah, that's what I will do. I'll do a little bit of side chain compression on the bass to help the kick pop through more. And I've got this SC channel I mentioned earlier. And this is where I've got a silent sound that is being triggered from a sampler. And I've got it set so that you can't hear it. I've got it set to sends only instead of master. And that will be used as a side chain trigger. But I want it to be going in time with my kicks. And you can see here that my kick pattern is different from the 4-4 side chain trigger pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in there, grab my kick drums, copy them, go into my side chain thing, grab all that, delete it, and then paste my kick pattern you can see here and then that's going to be triggering from my bass and the reason I'm not using the kick to trigger the sidechain compression is because the kick is quite a big long loud sample whereas my sidechain trigger is a very short sharp uh, sample which means that I can do all of the timing control on the compressor controls so I'm just going to and if that sounds a bit confusing I'll show you now so let's Put the compressor on, open up this little thing, choose sidechain, choose SC, because that's what I called it. So the signal's coming from SC into this compressor, which is going to be compressing our bass line. So let's just choose these sounds and we can hear what's happening. So you can hear the kick. And now let's bring the threshold down on the compressor. So you can hear the side chain compressor is kicking in when the kick's hitting and ducking the bass line. Let's just try the bass on its own so you can hear it be ducked. And that just allows the kick to breathe through more with more power. Cool, so we're getting there. Right, on to the next thing. I'm going to um, add some ethereal kind of chords like pads and then we'll go into the mixing stage and then we've got some kind of little arpeggio riff I'll show you how to do as well <clears throat> and another vocal yeah in fact I'll do that now I'm going to choose another vocal it's going to be something that gives a bit more interest it gives it more of that ravey sound so I'm going to call it rave again I'm going to open up splice and I'm going to put in rave and let's just have a listen. I got shot. Uh, and then I'm going to put in do, 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 a few more tags. Vocal. All right. Come on. Female. That be it. So let's just. Let's keep on dancing. Don't so, give up the. F so I'm going to listen to these as I'm playing it to find something that gels with the vibe of the tune. choose one in the correct key that would help but it's more the vibe I'm going for. Higher. I am going to choose that one because it's the right key and then I don't have to do any work on that. So I'm just using one credit and then I'm going to drag it into my track. Now, I'm working on just a loop obviously at the moment before taking it into a full track. Um, so this vocal loop would only this this vocal hit would only be used like rarely as a special moment like this for instance and again i'm going to choose complex pro turn it down a bit and i put lots of reverb on 
So it's just like an epic moment that might happen in a break. Well, there's lots of um, high end in that though, which I don't like. So I'm going to check my reverb. And then I'm going to put an EQ on that too. Just to tone it down a bit. And with this uh, stutter vocal, something else I'm going to do is put a compressor on there just to squash it all um, and make it a bit more um, consistent. It's just to bring up the quiet bits a bit more. Cool, okay, on to the next thing. Magic list, magic list. Tell me what to do. Make some big beats, Will, that's what it says to you. I don't know what's happened. I think I'm hungover. Right, okay. I'm gonna make these beats sound fatter by doing a bit of mixing. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tweak this break beat. I'm gonna add some compression to just bring it all together and make it a bit more punchy. Still sounded pretty good. So let's have a listen to the difference. It's just kind of crushing it a little bit to bring out some of the quiet shaker sounds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of reverb, room reverb, which is on my first um, auxiliary channel, which is uh, a short reverb. And I'll, I'll dial that in on the main snare that we added. I'm putting too much on just so I can get the length of the reverb right. There we go. And we can actually add some of that to the break beat as well. So that's with no reverb on. And that's with room reverb on. I've got some on the, um, the main snare as well. And then what I'm gonna do is group all of the, the kick, the drums and the breakbeat together because I want them to be gelled together and sound like they're coming from one place. So I'm going to call this drums, I'll call this kick and drum and that's a bus, which means all of these are going to be going through this channel, which we are going to be adding some processing to. So that's... Oops. And what I'm going to do is to the breakbeat, this is the one plugin I'm using that doesn't come with Ableton, but it's free. You can download it from Isotope. It is the, um, what's it called? Imager, the free version. So I'm just going to add some width to that breakbeat. Stereo width. I'm going to check it works in mono with my mono switch on the master channel, which is just a utility, so I can switch it from mono and back. See, listen to all that width that we're adding. So if we turn off the ozone, that's how the breakbeat sounds, and with it. Now we'll tweak this bass and, sorry, this bus, and we're gonna use the drum bus effect in Ableton, which I haven't actually used much, but I wanna give it a go. So this is without it on. So it just brings everything together, does some compression, does some saturation, and you can dial in a, you know, the dry, wet amount. And I'll go 100% wet, and then, now we are on to those ethereal chords that I was talking about. So let's turn everything on and get these chords done. We already drew them in, so I'm just going to call this pad, and then we're going to ch change the instrument to be a, a nice kind of synth. It 
In fact, what I'm going to do is on this stutter vocal, I'm going to add one of those um, images as well and make it even really wide. I mean, there's a bit of phasing issues there. I probably pushed it a bit wide, but but whatever. I'm feeling renegade. That's how I'm rolling today. All right. Next, we are going to do those ethereal things at last, the ethereal pads. Going to color this my synth color, assign tracks to clips, assign, assign color to clips, then instruments. Actually, I'll go with sounds. What kind of pad sounds do you have? Uh, let's see, synth pad. That's quite nice and ethereal. That's my favorite word today, ethereal. Don't wear it out, Will. It's nice, but it's a bit low. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'll just consolidate that, double click on my pad, grab it all, and then press shift and up, so it goes up an octave, like so. And I don't want there to be any gap between them. So you can select them all and press legato and then it brings them all to touch the one after it. Just make sure there's no low end I don't want in there. Um, where would that be? Yeah, definitely, definitely hungover. And that's so, I'm just making sure that there are, there's no low end that's gonna clash with the bass. Cool, we're, we're really close now. Um, I might need to tweak the levels because I'm doing this just in one go. So, you know, maybe the drums are a bit loud, but you can download this anyway for free below this video. So do that. And I will have tweaked the levels a little bit, made it sound a bit better so you can pick apart my methods. So don't forget to grab that. Now let's do this arpeggio riff, riff that we want. Um, let's just reorganize that stuff. Uh, yeah, so the arpeggio riff, and this is this is where it gets pretty cool. So I'm going to create this from scratch, and we want some blippy, blippy, weird riff that's technical, um, and we're going to do it with an arpeggio and using the MIDI arpeggio effect in Ableton Live. So let's get our instrument first. I'm going to choose the analog. It's a nice, nice little synth. First, I want this in mono because it's going to be. Uh, an arpeggio. Then I'm gonna turn on some glide so it sweeps from one note to another. Like so. Uh, and now this is where the fun stuff happens. If we go to MIDI effects, first we can choose a scale. And if you choose, let's see, C minor, we're, but we're in A minor. So what I'm gonna do is just change that bass up to A. And now I, I can only hit the notes in A minor. That is what that is doing. Now I'm gonna put on an arpeggiator after that. And now whenever I hold any of these notes, it's gonna play an arpeggio, but I'm gonna double the rate to sixteenths. Like so. I'm going to change the sound slightly though, it's a bit annoying. It's pretty cool. Let's take off the velocity controls. I don't really like the volume changing, so I'm just going to choose zero there. And I'm going to add some room reverb, like as we did with the snare. I'm just going to make sure that there's no low ends that we don't want with an EQ. But first I'm going to put on a lovely saturator just to give it a bit of warmth, thicken it up a little bit. Cool. 
Cool. So now I'm just going to jam as the tune's playing, and you can change which style you want the arpeggio to, to work in. That's pretty cool. So let's play and, yeah, let's play along. play with some of these effects um, on the arpeggiator which is quite cool, like this. And I'm just playing on the keyboard is also assign you know like the frequency to one of your control uh, the, one of the knobs on your controller or you could just automate it um, you know like so and then in terms of arrangement I mean that they are the main elements. The rest is is pretty simple. You're not having to change chord progressions. You're not having to create loads of different things because, as I said before, what captures the essence of the bicep sound is that almost stripped back, old school ravey warehouse sound that they've just brought up to date and they've done something new with it um, for for modern day. But it does mean that the compositions aren't super complex they're just really nicely done so you can have you know you could have parts like this where you just take out the bass and the pad and then you could go into a break bring everything so that is how you make music like bicep that was really quick as I said I did this all in one go um, from scratch so you can download this below hopefully you found some techniques that you can use in your own music Thanks for watching, stay safe, and until next time, cheers and happy producing. Oh, don't forget, subscribe to my channel and share it if you liked it.